there's forger's dies, they didn't mint as many coins, and so they usually survive. Wow, interesting. So, so you're probably, are you, are you going to put that up for auction, or are you holding on to that? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's I got a. There's a question here from yeah. uh, Dutch Libertarian. How do you know you have a legit seller in price? And well, that's kind of what we're discussing here. Is a lot of people are turning to just the slabbed NGC, and then therefore they say, "Well, I know it's it's legit." And then, of course, if it has a star or a high grade, they're just willing to pay an astronomical price for that. And that's kind of where we're we're pointing out to be careful is that if you can find just a good legit dealer like Aaron who or me because uh, I myself will guarantee the coins I sell and Aaron I'm buying them from Aaron and he as well will back the coins um, a lifetime as well so if you can find a good dealer you're gonna find probably the coin that you want uh, in the way you want it looking uh, and be able to come in at a good price and have a lifetime guarantee of if you ever find, you know, if someone ever calls you out on that coin and says, well, I know that's fake. Well, you have nothing to worry about then. Because right. Um, so another another thing, another thing to add to it is because um, what LLC is saying is 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 exactly true, is um, there are organizations um, that we're members of some of us larger dealers. Uh, one that's really the two biggest ones in the world uh, for coins is the PNG, that's the Professional Numismatic Guild. And the other one is the IAPN, the International Association of Professional Numismatists. To become a member of either one of these organizations, you have to have been in business for X amount of years. You have to have like over a million dollar inventory. You have to not have ever had a felony. You have to be voted in by all the peers of the organization. If you break any of the rules of the or any of the bylaws of the organization, you're kicked out. And okay. so it gives consumers a place to go if there's a problem. For right? sure. So I might say, well, I guarantee everything for life, but then all of a sudden I say, I'm not guaranteeing that. That collector can go to the IEPN or the PNG, which I'm members, we're members of both, and they can go to their disciplinary committee and say, Burke won't pay for this. Um you know, and, and, you know, it'll go through their bylaws. And if they find that I'm selling a fake, which is one of their bylaws, you can't sell a fake. Right. I can be kicked out of the organization. Sure. Okay, cool. And so you want to look for those kinds of tag. Uh, being a member of the ANA is not a good tag because anybody can become an, a member of the ANA. You just pay a membership fee. There's okay. no bylaws or anything like that. Okay. I'm sure you can be kicked out, but, you know, ultimately it's not the same. Sure. So, um, <clears throat> So the PNG and the IAPN are two really good organizations to follow those dealers, and they're represented all over the world. Um, and then also look to see how uh, a dealer represents his inventory. Um, is uh, um, <clears throat> you know look at places like Coin Archives, look at AC Search. Don't go to Heritage only to look up prices because Heritage is only going to give you the slab market. They're not going to give you the overall. But if I go to Coin Archives, Heritage is in there. I can okay. see all the heritage prices too. And I can say, well, that's an outlier because it was a star coin, you know? So there's, there's, and, you know, find a dealer that's willing to answer your questions. Right. Yeah. And so, um, I help clients all the time, you know, uh, um, you know, bypass and navigate this tricky environment. Yeah. And so, um, I have collectors that, you know, I represent clients in an auction. Sometimes clients will say, Hey, what do you think of this coin? And it's a five hundred dollar coin. I'm going to be like, you know, just represent yourself. Take care of it. This is what you should pay. It's a legit coin. This is a good comp company. Don't worry about it. Or they might say, Hey, like there was a French auction. French, the French auction houses are the worst to <laughs> deal with in general because it takes them forever to get their export papers. They typically, a lot of them don't ship, so you have to get an outside shipper. I just had a coin I represented a client getting, not knowing that it was another French company I don't like ended up being them on a 700 euro coin they charged 170 dollars to ship it 
which is ridiculous. Wow. They wow. wouldn't use my FedEx number, um, which ends up costing me about fifty dollars internationally, and I have insurance that's automatically included on all my all my FedEx packages, so I don't have to pay for insurance. Nice. So, um, so you got to know who you're dealing with as well. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if companies are being really aggressive with you in selling you something, um, be weary. <laughs> so sure. I never push people into purchasing. I, I always tell them when clients come in, they say, I want to, I really want to get an H quint. I really want to buy something. I tell them I'm not selling you anything today unless you have to have it. You know, I'd rather you just sit back, take a, you know, think about it for a while, look at different resources. I'll give you some, some direction and then decide what you want to buy because that first coin you buy isn't going to be the one you you'll within a few years either you'll keep because it was your first purchase or you'll sell it because you either made a mistake because it's not an area that you collect anymore because you're now into something else or you overpaid for it sure in the case might be sure so take your time collecting is not a sprint or a marathon it is um or it's not a sprint it's a marathon the the yeah, no, yeah, <clears throat> that's uh, good. Good advice for sure. I know, I, you know, I find myself. I, I get get to looking at these coins, and I just uh, just fall in love with them, and I want to go too fast. I know myself. I'm, I'm, you know, have to hold myself back a little bit too, because it's easy to get carried away. Um, so, for sure. For sure. so one of the, one of these people here that just asked that last question says he's living in Europe. Uh, do you have anyone over there that you would you would recommend? Yeah, um, tons. Uh, so um, Kunker in Germany is excellent. Gorni and Mosh in Germany is very good. Um, NAC, which runs our auctions out of Switzerland, and they're in the UK as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, who else? I mean, there's tons. I mean, most of you got to remember, you know, ancient coins come out of Europe. Europe, right? So right. Uh, they were collecting ancient coin, coins long before we in the United States were. So there's a lot of companies over there, um, and there's a lot of good ones. Um, Nomos is another one that's good um, in Switzerland. They're mostly in Switzerland, England, and Germany. Um, there are some decent ones in France as well. There's some in Belgium. Um, there's an okay dealer in Japan, but they mainly sell slabs. Uh, and then there's lots of little tiny outfits as well. Sure. Oh, yeah, products is okay. They sell a ton of stuff by e-sale. Um, Roma is okay, even though he's had his own problems with legality issues. Um, but that has nothing to do with his coins. There's a ton of e-sales out there. So uh, two places I go is either Numis Bids or Bitter. Um, they pretty much list every e-sale and every print sale in the entire world. So that's a good place to get registered and you can bid through the, through those services. So you don't have to register with every single auction house. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got Numa's bid uh, open here. I might share a screen in a little while and show it to people. Um, and you can have lot lists set up with both of those companies. So when somebody registers a new website, a new auction, it'll email you that your lot list has been. Um, oh, really? Has been found. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I did not. Yeah, did not know that. Yeah, if you're registered with either Numisbit or Bitter, you can put in lot lists. Okay, then, that's. Cool. I have one set for Cleopatra the seventh, and so anytime a Cleopatra pops up, it sends me an email and says, "Oh, that's know, awesome." Pop. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had a couple of questions from other people. I want to get in before I forget. Um, Josh Berman asked, "Do you know of a reputable Judea biblical coin dealer?" And of course, I'm thinking you. And uh, also, what you you interviewed? Uh, who was it, David? Hinden? David Hendon. And uh, <clears throat> so David Hendon is the foremost expert on Jewish coins. Um, he's written all the books, uh, Guide to Biblical Coins. He is the foremost expert in the world on, on on Jewish coins. He is no longer in the retail side of things because he moved over to the academic side, and he is the vice president of the American um, Numismatic Society. ANS, which is oh, one of the best, um, it's the oldest club, I believe, in the USA. Um, yeah. They have one of the largest ancient coin collections in the world. Um, oh. And so if you get a chance, uh, go to the ANS. There's a ton of resources there uh, for studying coins, a lot of cool websites and links to references. They publish a lot of books. Um, and they are kind of the, the, the organization for ancient coins. 
Okay, cool. And yeah, and then, <clears throat> like I say, you, uh, Aaron here is, is, uh, we sell all ancient coins. So I, I, we deal with a lot of Jewish. Um, I buy, I, I have a very good source in Israel that I get things legally exported out of Israel with papers. Nice. And so I do get coins out of Israel occasionally as well. Um, <clears throat> there's another guy, uh, uh, Zumi, I think is his name. He's out of, uh, he's, you can probably find him on, um, uh, one of the numismatic portals. Uh, um, but, you know, pretty much every ancient dealer sells Jewish ancient coins. Yeah. There's an, you know, um, uh, Goldberg will sell uh, Goldberg in California. They typically will auction off a lot of cool Jewish coins. So if you want more higher end um, you know, Jewish war coins, like their current sale uh, that's coming up on Monday, I think it's Monday through Wednesday, they've got a bunch of Jewish coins in there. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I think this guy was new and uh, and you know was just kind of looking around and asking and and mm -hmm. I just thought I'd I, I told him I would bring that question to you. So. Yeah, there's a coin mall also. Um, uh, kind of just drawing a blank on what it is. Um, oh, V coins. So V coins is um, it's basically a, a coin mall, and M M A shops is another one. That one's on the shop. Yep. So, um, but uh, there's MA shops and there's uh, V coins, and that's uh, dealers who don't want to pay for their own website. They use their website. Um, but there's a ton of, uh, uh, there's thousands of ancient coins up there, and you can search there for Jewish coins as well. And they've got a lot of inexpensive Jewish coins on there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and then there was one another question from another uh, this guy. I, I have a few. Most most of the people on my on my channel so far are just uh, you know bullion stackers, but I do have a few people that uh, are into ancients, which gets me excited. And I got one guy asking here, Kevin. He asks, uh, my question for Aaron is, what is the best source? to reference rarity. And I know I've asked you this before, but he says there are many types of similar coins, some rarer than others. The only way I've learned what a rare type is, is by word of mouth or personal opinion. And I'm wondering if there's a more established source of information specifically for BC Greek coins. Again, go to coin archives or AC yeah. search. If you do yeah. a search and hardly any come up, it's rare. Gotcha, gotcha. Because those platforms have been around for 20 plus years. And if those coins haven't been coming up on a regular basis for the last 20 years, they're rare. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's in uh, coin archives, that's a bit more expensive, but the AC search is pretty readily available for that. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can get six months, I believe, for free on uh, coin archives, but they only give you six months, the last six months of auctions. Uh, a year oh. uh, is, is $600. I think for students, it's cheaper and academics. He has an academic price as well. And then I for AC search, I believe it's $125 or $150 a year. Okay. And I think you can even join for like months. You don't have to do a whole year. Okay, cool. Cool. So awesome. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, I seen you. <clears throat> you just found a forger's die here of late. I did. <laughs> it's right here. That's cool. I know. I, I was asking you early on if you'd ever come across those, and you said no, not very often. You had one or two, but now you, you just found one. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I actually got this in the Triton auction. So no. um, it's a it's a forger's die from the time of Domitian, and it's actually a reverse die uh, copying a Domitian denarius. And a reverse. So is that that's the part that you would hit with the hammer? Well, yeah. This would be clamped down. Oh, that would be put your hot planchet here. Okay. And you have the probably the top piece on a hammer or in another vice, and then yep. you just hit it. Okay. Okay. So that would be the bottom. Gotcha. Yeah. So they're really, really rare. So awesome. Because Good. official dies usually they would keep breaking them until they broke apart, and they get destroyed. So there's not many of them that survived. Okay. Um, but there's forger's dies. They didn't mint as many coins, and so they usually survived. Wow. Interesting. So, so you're probably are you are you going to put that up for auction, or are you holding on to that? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, it's probably out of my pay. pay I never day. had one, so you know, in 30 years, it'd be cool to kind of hang on to it for a little while. No doubt. So, That's but I've had a couple people ask me if I was selling it, but I thought it would be cool. That's why I did the video because I thought it would be cool to show. Yeah. 
No, that's I've been I've I'm interested in in those as well. So that's that's cool to see. Um, oh, I was gonna ask you right quick. So if I was gonna bid on one of these like numerous bids, what does it take to? Can you you can be an everyday Joe and do this, or nope. do you need a company or? Nope. And you just you just put your basic information in and you get on and bid. Yeah, and the auction house typically would have to they may ask you for references um and or not and then they would give you a um they would give you a a limit of how much you could bid and uh and that's it and they would just say okay um so yeah it's not hard okay um... every auction house is different in the way that they handle it so you just have to, you know, I get, I get emails from auction houses all over the world because somebody gave me as a reference and I look them up in my database and I say, okay, well, they have been with me for two years and they bought five times and I never had any problems. And I just email to the auction house saying, um, all good on my end. And they say, okay, thanks. I see. Not hard. All right. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> yeah, it looks like we've been going for about 45 minutes. That's what I would uh, I would like to try to keep these around that area. So uh, I would Sorry, like I talk, I talk a lot. Sorry. No, that's perfect. That's that's what I need. Because I'm, I'm so <laughs> nervous for this thing. I, I'm really appreciative of you coming on my channel. It's, uh, sure. it's a great honor for me. Sure. So, sure. um, and before we get off, I know you were just at the, uh, New York international. So was. how was that? If you don't mind, it was really good. Um, it's a long week. Um, I, um, I was there on, uh, the Monday before the show because the auctions start on Monday night. And so I was there Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday bidding in auctions for clients. And I spent over a half a million dollars for my clients wow. in total. Um, so I was pretty successful uh, with a lot of clients on coins. Nice. And then, um, but it's like, it's, it's kind of grueling, um, but you are spending other people's money. So that's kind of fun, <laughs> but, uh, but it, it can be a little stressful too, because you don't want to mess up. Sure. Um, and then the show set up is Thursday and that runs th Thursday through Sunday. So it's a long week. And then, and then to come home and go right back to work. So, um, it's, uh, it was a grueling week, but it was really successful. I met a lot of, um, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll plug, I have a podcast. Totally. Like, totally. So I do a, I do a podcast on ancient coins. So any of you new collectors, um, we just finished our 39th episode. So it's literally over 40 hours of ancient coin discussion. And, yeah. um, you can find that, um, on YouTube searching the ancient coin podcast with Aaron Burke. Or you can go to my website, which is uh, hjbltd.com. And then on the homepage, we have a link to all the podcasts. And you can go that direction as well. But I had literally <clears throat> um, at least 100 people come up and tell me they love the podcast. And so it's getting a lot of love from that. It was very humbling. And uh, and it's great because we well, the way we do our podcast is we start out with a um, – uh, we introduce ourselves and then i bring up an auction that's coming up and talk about the auction house and talk about a couple of the coins in their auction so people get familiar with other auction houses around the world and talk yeah. about pricing and talk about a couple of interesting coins we do what's called the doofus purchase which means that you over somebody overpaid for a coin in my opinion <laughs> so then i will list uh, a doofus purchase and what not to do teach people yeah. and then um, we have an educational section um, and so everything's a lot of visual. So it's a podcast, but it's more visual than anything else. And so we're showing a lot of pictures of coins, teaching. We have an educational section, then we have what's called a pearl of wisdom, uh, which is just kind of our back. And I do it with um, with Mike Nottleman, who's been running the Coin Show podcast for about twelve years uh, with another guy. Yeah. And so he and I do it together. And Mike doesn't know anything about ancients; he knows about U.S. And so it's me teaching him about ancient coins. So he will ask the, the novice question for the novice collectors, and yet I cover things that will entice uh, advanced collectors as well. And yeah. so um, there's a little bit for everything for everyone. And so yeah. a lot of love from a lot of different people. And so that was really, really rewarding, and it makes doing that job a lot easier. 
Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think I have uh, most of Aaron's information in the description below. If not, I will uh, get it down there later. Um, yeah, I've watched uh, all those episodes on the Ancient Coin podcast probably two or three times. It's great information, uh, really entertaining. Uh, a lot of a lot of fun over there. Mike's great as well. So oh, definitely. OC Stacker, if you can either reach out to LLC or myself, I do have coins of Marcus Aurelius, so I'm pretty sure. Yep, um, yep. Get a hold of Aaron or stay tuned here, and we, we can make that happen for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. All right. Um, I think well, I was going to mention that uh, just for the people who don't know, I know you gave a little bit on your background, and we could go on and on about Aaron's background. I did want to mention, though, that he was uh, – <clears throat> noticed by coin world magazine as uh top 100 most influential people in numismatics on ancient coins so uh, my dad and i together which was and really your cool. dad twice right too or yeah, something yeah, like that so yeah cool and well, my dad wrote the he wrote the uh you can see it there on llc screen yep. the yep. Uh, 100 greatest ancient coins yep. um he just finished the we just published the third edition and so awesome. whitman who hand, does all the it's a series greatest 100 greatest ancients us currency token oh so it's a whole series i didn't know so, that yep and so uh, my dad was hired by whitman to write it so and then they publish it and only the us series book and the ancient one has gone th uh three editions awesome yeah i'm gonna have to get that third third edition from me cool uh yeah let's see what oh and then <clears throat> speaking of the 100 greatest ancient coins book did he i thought i was listening to one of your talks or somewhere along the line someone was mentioning that they ended up using his numbering system that that for... it's the coins of chrysos so my dad put together the most complete collection of chrysos in it's chrysos reigned about 546 um bc um and he actually came up with the first um gold and silver or electrum and silver um multi-denominational um series yeah. uh ever created it was the first series of different denominations going from a stator all the way down to a 124th stator in and then they were exchangeable in silver and my dad had the most complete set that's it the most complete set ever put together um and so um and there was one coin in the gold that was not discovered yet. And my dad knew it existed because the silver one existed. And then he found it. And wow. so he added to the collection. Um, and he's got a couple other uh, trial pieces that are in the collection that were um, undiscovered as well. And so people started using that Burke system in the book. To wow. um, So if you look up Chrysos, a lot of times they'll say Burke 2 or Burke 4. <laughs> that's what they're referring to. Okay, that's cool. That's awesome. Cool, cool. Well, Aaron, I, I'm going to wind this down. I, I'm hoping maybe in the future that, you know, or however you want, how whatever you're willing to do. But um, I'd like to, to kind of maybe next time go over some of the auctions and coins that I might be interested in as well. Sure. Um, I know the big sales just happened that you were at, so there's mm -hmm. there's not a lot happening at the moment. But, but, yeah, I'd like to do that too maybe in some future shows, look at some of the coins that I would be interested in, or maybe you can point some out that, you know, I wouldn't know about sure. or whatnot. And, sure. And, uh, so, there's yeah. There's always an auction going on. I'm bidding in Goldberg on Monday. <laughs> so, okay. You know, it's it never really ends. But the two, the major auction season is spring and fall and then in January. That's it. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, we will. Uh, I'll get with you, and we'll hopefully set one up for next month again. And Absolutely. and uh, thank you so much for coming on, Aaron. Yeah, and, it was my pleasure. And uh, thanks, guys, for all your questions. I really appreciate it. Awesome. All right, Aaron. We will see you on the next one. Okay. Take care.